When I was an undergraduate student at CMU, I never imagined I'd be a graduate student designing cloud-based e-courses. In fact, I didn't even know what LMS technology was or how it functioned and why its use is so critical for creating personalized learning opportunities for students. Yet, creating online courses is precisely what I'm learning more about on this very day, April 24th, 2019, which is when I'm recording this section of my screencast movie and working toward final editing improvements before it is published as the final EDU 709 assignment and overall experience before completing my master's degree. Nevertheless, my career goals involve helping grade one students to develop proficiency in ELA by creating educational products and services which integrate music as a bridge between content standards and the subsequent achievement by students who are engaged with such innovative resources. Therefore, as an EDU 709 student, I must ask, how can my efforts as a budding education entrepreneur result with the end purpose of increasing student enterprise? Consider the following conceptual framework as a possible reference point for answering the aforementioned question. Traditionally, the means by which society supported our children in obtaining their formal education was by making sure that they attended school at a physical building with teachers, administrators, and fellow classmates. Incidentally, what I am about to articulate is not dismissing this necessity in the majority of situations, i.e., it is not an either-or proposition. Rather, it is a both-and proposition in light of 21st century pedagogy by which blended learning and flipped classrooms are prevalent. Notwithstanding, we can support our K-12 students within the estimated 3,000 counties throughout our 50 United States by means of exposing them to environments where technology is correctly utilized in connection with all stakeholders embracing triumph in both an academic and social context through various educational innovations. Let's consider this educational innovation theorem. Means plus innovation equals triumph. First though, we must define our terms. Means equals providing for our children, i.e. physical and or intellectual methods by which our posterity are transported from point A to point B on the trajectory toward excellence in individual and collective citizenship. Point A are intentional provisions functioning in direct correlation to the need for every human child to develop real-world experiences which encircle diverse forms of knowledge. Hence, knowledge informs experiences in terms of the implications of cause and effect, but experience guards the acquisition of knowledge by keeping it safe from error and superficiality. Moreover, innovation equals the concrete educational resources which facilitate the union of both knowledge and experience along the journey from point A to and specifically at point B. The premise, therefore, involves creativity in teaching students of all ages in ways that are practical, engaging, and effective. Point B, the tangible environments, experiences, and resources which all function to educate our children so that they can learn diverse academic content and subsequently demonstrate student achievement. Note. Point A and point B have attributes which are both similar and different. Thus, point A representing means plus point B representing innovation equals triumph. And that is what this EDU 709 project for Module 5 is all about.
consequently, the following presentation will help you to see how I created an online course with LMS technology. Hi, this is Dennis with EDU 709, Module 6, as we get into this presentation for the story song project where I wanted to take a song I wrote for first grade students and put it into a story. That is to say it can be an ebook or an actual um, book, a little book that we can print, a little story anyhow, and connect it with multimedia with, with a song and put it into an e-course. Uh, and do many things with multimedia. I'm very excited to be able to show you about Audacity, which is a free application. And what I did in this project was what you can see here. I'm actually using it to record what you're hearing now. But this is what I also use to record the piano and my singing and the story. And so it's pretty straightforward. You just click the red record button. And then when you're finished, you press stop and then you basically export it as an mp3 and then I, as you'll find out, I then uh, imported it. So I export the audio from Audacity and then import it as an mp3 into Final Cut Pro X. Okay, Dennis back here with you for this portion of the presentation, this section here where I'm teaching you about how I created the images that are seen throughout each of the three video lessons. Now, before I created these slides, which were then subsequently saved as JPEG files, I had already recorded the song that was written, the story song. And so using the piano, I played the music and sang and recorded that together as one audio file. Then I built the images that could go together with the audio files to go into the various video lessons. So instead of Photoshop, which we have, but I have not learned how to use it yet. So that's why I'm using the Macintosh, the Apple version of Microsoft's PowerPoint. It's called Keynote. And I really like it. You can save each slide as a JPEG. So it's very handy for creating images. Anyhow, let's take a look at what I did here. It was just using clip art, and then I just built the illustrations one slide at a time. And of course, I have a strategy for how I want to teach first graders which is to start off with basically words, build up to phrases, and then get right into the sentences and passages. Anyhow, this is what it looks like. It was just a lot of copying and pasting from the website for the clip art and then making sure everything looked nice so that I could insert each slide one at a time into Final Cut where the video was edited and saved created and then saved and then uh, uploaded to YouTube, which I'll be showing you about that in a little bit here. Anyhow, at the very end here, you can see I created these slides as well for the introduction to each video, which was a visual to give students information on what the directions are as they viewed each video lesson. Thank you. Okay, now we're looking at Final Cut Pro X, which is professional movie editing software created by Apple. And I wanted this software for many years, but my wife and I could not afford it, and for other circumstances too. And so for many years, I used iMovie, which is consumer grade, but it didn't have all the bells and whistles. So I am so thankful that we were finally able to purchase a used computer with a lot of professional software on it. So let's get into this. As far as those JPEGs and the MP3s, you go to File, Import, Media, 
and then you just choose what you want to import. You go to the bottom right and you click import all and then you'll see the files to your top left right there and you just drag the ones you want down here to the bottom and that's where you build your movies. Now to the bottom you will see the green files. Those are the audio files and to the top are the JPEGs which are your still image files and of course you can put your animated or your movie files there too and what you do is depending on how long you want a slide or any file to to last you just drag to the right or to the left and you can you can do that now something I really like about this as far as when I said bells and whistles is you can use these generators so you look to the right you can see the one I used here is the cloud and there's many different ones and for the text boxes uh, there's just so many options like I said so many bells and whistles with this professional software as far as these generators I did choose like I said a moment ago to use this cloud uh, for the EDU 709 project that I did with the LMS created online e-learning course and basically it's really cool because you can have the text layered with movement you see you have the clouds moving in the background and it's layered with text so it just creates this beautiful professional look it's 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 awesome um, as far as another generator here's one called curtain and that's what I use in this very screencast movie you're looking at right now at the beginning and again it just gives you a layer because you can put text in front of these generators and so this is something I've been learning and something I used in this module 5 project and I'm very excited I'm very thankful to have this software it's really gonna help me as I pursue my career At this point, we're getting very close to the completion of the presentation in terms of what I accomplished, which is the creation of an online course, an e-learning resource using learning management system software. We're not quite there, but once we upload the .mov files from Final Cut Pro X, then we are ready to go to that software. Or that LMS software. However, uh, what you can see here is once those movie files were exported from Final Cut, you just simply upload them, you drag and drop them here in YouTube. And of course, I didn't think I needed to go too far with explaining that because I think about everybody knows what YouTube is and how it works. But I wanted you to see that it's that simple. You, you go to this Google application called YouTube and right there where that arrow is, you just hover over it like I did a moment ago and you drag and drop. Or you can click on like I showed you and you can click your .mov or any other video file, movie file. Um, in this case, I use MOV because I'm uh, a Mac user for the most part. And yes, once, once you upload it, then you just simply you know, put your tags in. So when people out there in Cyberland in the cyber universe uh, do a Google search or use some other you know search engine if you will they can pull up your videos that's that's why you put tags in so I did that and of course titled the videos and and gave a little bit of an introduction but I think you know how YouTube works so that's what I did thank you okay here we are this is really the climax of this presentation as it reflects my EDU 709 experience, particularly uh, the fruition of Module 4, uh, I guess culminating with Module 5, which was the ultimate fruition as far as this project. And let me say that I was going to use Lifter LMS. That was the research I did during uh, Module 4, but there were reasons. I just had to go with this other online software called Talent LMS. There was a good reason for that. But it would be a tremendous disservice for me to not say how serious this is. I mean, this is the crux of the matter. This is the main reason why I did this project and really why I'm in this educational technology program, which I'm very humbled and grateful to God that here on May 4th in a little over a week, I'm scheduled to graduate in Mount Pleasant. I have my cap and gown and I'm very humbled and grateful about 
what this has done for me. But as far as why I'm learning what I'm learning, in a, in a very simplified uh, way, I can say that learning how to create online courses really is the tra trajectory of my educational work in my career. And I want to do it in a broad range of contexts. Uh, but I'm very excited. And so here we are, Talent LMS. So the first thing I want to show you is where it lets you be the administrator, the instructor, or the learner. Really the administrator was the main function I used. So you go to courses and there's a bunch of different ones here they let you, because this, this was free, I don't have a paid subscription, at least not yet. I don't know if I will use this eventually. Um, but maybe I'll talk about that in my module six reflection. But anyhow, so you go in here as the administrator and you can give an introduction to your course. In this case, it's called Buddy the Funny Bear, the story that I wrote. And you have four videos. So here you go. This is what's so cool about LMS. It houses, it, it facilitates your, your content. In this case, it's simply four videos. And yes, there's an assessment at the end, but it shows you what you can do as far as editing and so on. And so once I uploaded these, which was very straightforward, um, yeah, you just upload them and then you can, you can give directions as you go through these four. I did the introduction and then the three lesson videos. And so you just give your students some basic instructions. They watch the video, etc. Then they click on that they've completed it and they go to the next one. And by the time they get to this one, this really is once they've studied, if you will, by practicing the first two lessons, this is really where they're listening to me sing the complete song and they can practice it. They can, you know, get to learn and get familiar with the song. Um, so here's an assessment. You just drag and put these in order. So the student, the little first grader, um, maybe this is too complicated. I don't know. I got to work with that. But they can, you know, put them in order to show they understand the order of the story. And of course, uh, they have that little certificate. But this is very basic LMS. I mean, this is free. So this doesn't even have all the bells and whistles. So I could make an analogy to um, what I said about iMovie compared to Final Cut. Um, this is just a free version, so if I really want to get more bells and whistles in course creation software and using this type of software, yeah, I'd have to pay for it and so on. So, But I'm going to talk more about that in my Module 6 Reflection because I'm still learning so much. It's been a great, uh, great semester. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ming, and to all my classmates. But yeah, you can see how it works. Oh, right there. I wanted you to see this. That's the URL. So once it's complete, you share that URL, and that's how people take your course. Okay, we've arrived at the very end of this screencast movie, and I want to teach you about marketing, e-marketing, email marketing using Constant Contact. So I went to constantcontact.com, and you can hear our 20-month-old child in the background. He's excited. But nevertheless, once you sign up, they'll send you this information, letting you know you're all good to go, and so you log right in. And of course, this is a free account, and this is for the purposes of EDU 709, so I'm not actually going to use the template we're about to choose. However, I need the practice, and I want to start using email marketing, probably through Constant Contact. I like what they have to offer, probably coming up here in May, you know, just in the weeks ahead. So it's pretty self-explanatory. And so we can see the template, and there's other information they want, and of course, this is just temporary. I have to restructure exactly which emails I want to use and how I want to professionally set it up. But for the purpose of this course, I'm just going with what works best for me right now. And of course, the image has to go because that's not quite relevant to the e-learning courses, which I typed in. So you have to modify it, of course. And I'm sure the more familiar that I will become with this type of software, I'm sure the more um, options I'll have with how I want it to look. And, how it can be designed from the beginning. But I do like the idea of having a template. It's very user friendly. And so I figured why not use what I had here on the computer, which was from, I think module three, if I'm not mistaken, certainly module two or module three, in terms of the image we created for, for our wiki. And so that, that looks much nicer in terms of this type of presentation. If somebody, if a, if a school principal, for example, or a parent or teacher received this about e-learning courses certainly that looks a little more educational than that other picture but 
you know, all of you, you've been around, this is 2019. Cloud-based software is a big part of our life and we use it for so many things, whether it's websites like Weebly or email marketing. So then you're ready to go. Just when you get all the information in there as far as who you're sending your advertisement out to, then you're ready to send it. Thank you.